አስራሁለት አመት ሆኖ ተረድቷል የዚሁን ምድርን በጫማው
really the new the new world that uh, that must come I think the new earth and the new heavens is a sign that just before that time there would come one called the king of kings the lord of lords and the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah who the whole world would see every eye would see him they would make war upon him the nations of the world would make war upon him but he would establish his kingdom having defeated them you see he would send out the sign from the mountain of Zion for the nations to gather for the nations to gather Where is this that information is in the holy bible it's in the Kabbalah Gas also you know it's in the book of Enoch also the book of Enoch is present in the Amoric uh, bible anyway but it's one of those books which is taken out of the western bible you see so the book of Enoch tells us also that when the Lord in his glory and his goodness sits amongst the people as king he would sit on the high mountains actually it tells you of seven mountains and it says Jah would sit in the middle one and I proclaim him to the world as the, the as the Messiah then but they tell us to look for him to look for the Christ so we find him when we see and know who Emperor Haile Selassie is of the Lion of Judah the will of that divine power see so that divine power is what I and I see as I and I force in bringing us home to Ethiopia to Africa that home of the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant has always been said to be in Ethiopia. No other nation claims it. As a matter of fact, for the last 3,000 years, the scattered children of the earth, because they are told from every tribe, every family, every tongue, every nation, the people will gather in the Mount Zion. So that is I and I covenant with this King of Kings when he comes. See his majesty is that man that calls him that gives him all. So his majesty is that word. His majesty is the word in this time. Did his majesty claim that he's not God or you know we think that? His majesty said, My glory is in the Bible. My glory is in the Bible. The Bible tells us that the time will come when a king of kings when once when when one when sits on the throne of David, who is acknowledged with these titles, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah. The flag of Ethiopia bears the true flag, the Lion of Judah, on it. Because the prophecy is claimed by Ethiopia. This throne of David and this Lion of Judah who represents the sent Christ from time. Christ didn't write anything at all. It was, it, was those who, it was those who had faith in him who decided after a long time to, to really they gotta get this information down somehow. The title, Negus Negas, Getauch Geta, more ambassadors in the Negata Yehuda, Sinix Yabir Madani Alam, Etzion Negus. You see? He is the king of Zion. That means the holy mountain that is prophesied in the Bible at that time there was no Israel existing you know no more than this modern day state of Israel there was none so the governments of the earth the European England Germany Belgium the Eastern Japan Australia New Zealand whomsoever China Russia the Western the Americas whomsoever was a the African nations were not there because they were all colonized so here was the whole earth coming into the heart of darkest Africa where there is supposed to be no civilization whatsoever to um, give their bow down before the king on the throne, David. So the message that his majesty gave to them was, I am the king of kings and the lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. It is, uh, some people are saying with this time, is dead. So, what do you say about that? All right. Mm. Our, our concept of the, 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 the fullness of faith and the love of the Almighty for humanity 
we are told that some that they are, we have examples of, of prophets and great spiritual figures who they are told these things happened a long time ago but they told they did not pass through death or they conquered death he said that they are arresting in Ethiopia right now anyone who looks anyone who resembles and pride is last name is being arrested and I will more details since I've come to this about that time you know. uh, the soldiers were looking for his majesty after they he's supposed to have passed away or being killed or executed or died in whatever way they were looking they didn't try to prove to the people look this man is a dead old man mortal and we've cut off his head or whatever here he is he can't help you anymore they didn't make that move the pattern in the bible is the same when christ was buried supposedly in his tomb he was found to be there was no body they couldn't find a body the ruler said, oh no, the people will say he's living, that he's conquered death. They knew all of that because the man said he would do it and now we can't prove he's dead. So at that time they couldn't prove, they said he's buried in a, in a, um, a secret place. You know, an untold grave, then, an unmarked grave as a, as a form of disgrace to his name. He, and, and then there are other reports that came out too because these things you cannot ever stifle them. There is the report of His Majesty going into Stefano's church at Mescal there to pray after he's now been taken into what you like a house arrest by the Derek government. Still a certain place. He went into Stefano's and uh, in Stefano's he was allowed to go into a small place to pray by himself and he never came out of there. So that after a time the guards became perturbed and went to look for him, he had disappeared. Fools say in their hearts, they say, Rasta, your God is dead. But I and I know, Dre, I go Dre again, shall live.
elephant and try to describe it. The first man approaches the elephant, touches his side, and says, it feels like a wall. The next man touches his tusk and says, the elephant must be like a spear. Another blind man touches the trunk and says, it feels like a snake. Picking up right where we left off in the colonization of North America and South America and Christopher Columbus and the Spanish conquest and the Catholic conquest of America. Uh, we go on to say how he talked about how we are so naive and free with our possessions that no one who has not witnessed it would believe it. When you ask for something they have, they never say no. And to the contrary, they offer to share it with anyone. This is from his personal law. Uh, the natives brought us parrots and balls of cottons and spears with many other things. And he goes on to talk about these things. Now, um, this is on his first voyage of Christopher Columbus coming to the Americas. And as we know, we told you he came from Genoa. And from Genoa, Italy, specifically, we want to focus on where he came from, who he was, so that you can know who we are or where we came from. In Genoa, Italy, in the old uh, the Republic of G Genoa uh, he uh, came from and he went to Spain uh, the old Hispania to uh, come and capture the minds of those who believe in the Catholicism and religion even though he was still a Jew he was a converted Jew and he used these people and he said these people have no religious belief nor are they isolators they are very gentle and do not know what evil is nor do they kill others nor do they steal and they are without weapons and again remember modern day Spain is Hispania, Hispania of old and France is Galia of old and it's uh you have Asia you have the Ottoman Empire you have old Italia instead of Italy and uh, we want to pay attention to the modern changes of uh, names on current maps compared to the old maps where you see uh, <coughs> you also have Morocco and things of that nature and we're going to get into this government because this is directly going to connect um, Americans into the uh, African heritage and roots that you have and you're talking about the Caribbean Sea where he went specifically to Haiti and Cuba first before he uh, went and colonized and invaded the rest of the Caribbean Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia and everything else and specifically Dominique, Dominican Republic and Haiti which was the old Hispaniola so when you're talking about Hispaniola, you're talking about Cuba, you're talking about all of these things who are uh, the Native Americans who Columbus first invaded and um, subjugated. We're talking about the blacks of these islands and uh, we're talking about them before he come into uh, the northern parts and northern states in America, uh, uh, northern parts of America, South America. He broke bread with you. You see the natives breaking bread with them. He ate with them and then he used them and he uh, destroyed their civilization. He captured their beliefs, their relics, their culture, everything. As you can see, our native symbols on the floor of our uh, mirrors and our uh, uh, tribal symbols on the floor, the lions and everything like that, formulated in Mexico, slave states, and um, uh, 
unjust workers, unjust things. And even on Christmas Eve, he was shit rucking. He put that they people are artless and generous with what they have to such a degree that no one who believe it has was seen it. That if they ask, they would never say no, but they but rather invite you to accept it and show so much lovingness with their hearts. This is what he wrote on on Christmas Eve, and he left. 39 men to establish a fort he called La Navidad. And you know that song, Feliz Navidad. Well, this is your Christmas. This is your Christmas. So the European Christmas that everybody want to celebrate, but nobody wants to face the reality of the histories behind these things. And this is the history of Christopher Columbus and what he did to the Native Americans. And he put the pictures in black and white because they don't want you to connect, connect to your roots. But these are the people, black people, African people, people, brown skinned people, uh, who he did this to and what they did to and, uh, uh, it's unfortunate, but this is the kingdoms that they destroyed from Galia to his uh, Hispania to uh, all of these things and changed it into modern day Spain and France and all the uh, everything like that. And you can see they completely destroyed the Ottoman Empire, the Moroccan Empire. Uh, after they destroy these things, they go. But like I said, we of our own motion and our own solicitation do give concede and assign every everything to themselves. And this peasant princess, Isabella, who married into royal black heritage, was able to fund the second voyage. And she was able to fund the second voyage by marrying into black heritage so that she can get control over the military army of which is now modern day France and in modern day Spain and this was the king King Alfonso who was the ruler of that territory over that time and when we talk about modern day uh Galio African Galia and we're talking about modern day France we're talking about the kingdom of the Celts and how they controlled uh, all of France Luxembourg Belgium Switzerland northern Italy Ger Germany and she needed his army to fund the second voyage to fund Christopher Columbus second voyage of uh to Hispaniola and uh, back into Cuba and uh, to capture the people and to capture gold and all of their possessions. Now, uh, what Christopher Columbus did while he was over there was, of course, convert them to and subjugate them to be uh, going to conform to religion, to the schools that they wanted to dress how they wanted and to uh, become slaves and to become indoctrinated into the slave trade. They did this to the Native Americans and these are the Native American Indians who are also so the same Africans that come from Africa and like I said pay attention to the old maps because we're talking about the, um, the old tribes whom they say was destroyed we're talking about the Murs, we're talking about the uh, the uh, Cherokees we're talking about the the uh, the Wichita's, we're talking about the Blackfoot's, we're talking about every single last tribe that they said that they was destroyed these are the people, these are the uh, the Incas, the Almacs, these are the, the civilizations that they say is so old and they was so old because some that was over two existed for over two hundred thousand years. Some of them up to thirty thousand years before they was invaded. So they was a very old nation of people, um, but now subjugated into slavery through Christopher Columbus and the torment that he did to them. And it said many of them began to commit suicide to avoid the torture that was being happened to them, killed by starvation, worked to death to death, disease, murder. Naked as the day they was born, they show no more embarrassment than animals. Let us in the name of the Holy Trinity go on to making all of them slaves that can be sold. And this is what Christopher Columbus did. And this is again a very old photo of Hispaniola, Cuba, and a history of Cuba. And you can look this up and you can find this in museums. You can find this on any um uh, uh, historical uh, site that gives accurate information and um, this is uh, the history of what we have to face and we're going to go into the third voyage and we're going to go into Christopher Columbus and what he did uh, how he got paid uh, for his fame, how he got paid to enslave uh, people
In this segment, we will discuss black history of the world during the 10th century. It is important to note that black people are an important part of civilization. We are a community of folks that had advancement in sciences, mathematics, agriculture, medicine, architecture, mining of materials and minerals and metals. And I mean, we were so important to humanity and cultivating the world. So specifically, we want to talk about in this segment... Uh, Timbuktu and how it correlates to American history and Caribbean history and the history of the North. And this is a map of the 10th century, as you see here, an uh, Egyptian form boat, but this boat actually was created in Mali in Africa, but had scholars from Egypt that was a part of this heritage as well. Through Mansa Musa, a great king who led in Timbuktu, which is modern day Mecca. So this is important to note that the ancestry that we had of Timbuktu is in correlation now modern day Mecca. And that's a part of our spiritual and our heritage of who we are as Muslims. And this is prim primarily a Muslim nation practicing Egypt, Morocco, and Mali, and which is Timbuktu, Mecca, and so forth, and other parts of the world. So ancient and, and modern all connects as into one history and we want to show how important black history was in these established parts of Morocco, Egypt and elsewhere as we learn about Timbuktu, as we learn about Mansa Musa, as we learn about black history. We want these to be included in our history because it's beyond legend of who he was as a king, who he was as a people. He was a great king who was very, very well the, he mined minerals, he mined gold and metals, precious metals, and he gave these things back to the people. And he gave cola nuts and, I mean, salts and um, silks and all kind of things, uh, uh, commodities that were needed in society to help advance the culture of people and help advance the culture of the world. He taught these uh, to these advancements to all cultures of the world and the Mars traveled to all parts of the world teaching and inspiring and educating and this is important to know who Mansa Musa was and not only did he just give back to the people but he created technology and developed technology um, and birthed this into the world and he was the great lion considered the great lion of Africa and this is important we're going to go into how deep he was rooted in Africa and how he was connected to all parts of the world through his trading and how wealthy and rich he was and was able to give back to humanity and give back to all people whom he encountered and give all of this gold and all of this wealth to the to, to the world and spread this joy and spread this knowledge to the world so we're going to talk Talk about Mansa Musa and who he was, and that's basically what we establish in here: who we was, who his warriors was, like um, Suntadia, and this is important. And just knowing history as a people that we were great and that we had so we should take pride in all of our culture all parts of Africa all parts of America all parts of the Caribbean because we're going to show how we were connected and how these establishments through Egypt and through Morocco and through all these places developed in the north the south the east and the west so and we're going to show the connection and the correlation to the maps that they created through their voyages and expeditions. This is important because they created uh, star maps and they created um, travel maps for on land and in sea where they <laughs> used to navigate routes and, and do trading. And so this is important from Nigeria to Mali to Morocco to Ethiopia to Egypt to Tanzania and beyond and how deep rooted and connected they were and how many uh, cultures stem from out of this heritage of having this mixed up culture of Hebrews here. And we're going to talk about the 10th century and we're talking about other people who were part of Timbuktu and who were part of Manta Musa's legacy like Muhammad al Idrisi and what he did to help establish maps in the world in the early 1790s, 1230s, 1600s, and 1400s, 1500s. We're talking about this heritage because... Uh, 
this is important to know that in the early 10th century, we were so highly advanced. We had roots, we had established maps, we had soaps, we had minerals, we had mines. We uh, took documentation of the currents, ocean currents, as you can see, and we were so far advanced in anything that anybody could possibly think of to be able to... Um, say that we were people that just come from enslavement is false we are people come from a great culture and this is something that we need to take pride of of being um so far technically advanced and ahead of time and ahead of our uh, the curve as so to speak so this is important how the merse were a combination of many different hebrews from the mali empire timbuktu from egypt and beyond and these Many different Hebrews cultivated and embraced the Muslim religion most, where you see the Muslim religion is mo uh, these towns are mostly in Hebrew, and a lot of this Hebrew have not been translated. Let me be correct on the saying that a lot of the Hebrew has not been translated. What you know now is modern-day Arabic. It's partial and reconstructed Hebrew. So the technologies and the sciences that they advanced and a lot of things that they know have been left behind. Abu Bakr, 1307, had an expedition to the Americas where he came to Americas with many, many men and many, many boat scholars, teachers, um, venturers, doctors, a lot of noble p priests and things of that nature and they came here to the Americas to connect with the ancestors of Africa that was already traveled over here in South America and North America. So this is important to know that in 1300s we were already uh, re-migrating um, over into another exodus into the Americas. We were already over there before many great um, atlases and maps world maps was established because of these travels and these routes so uh we not only attract established routes we established religion we established culture we established all these things and this was taken from us through enslavement and this is important to know why did all of these riches and all of this wealth and all of this knowledge was taken to taken away from us but we still have many spiritual uh re ways we can reconnect to it um being being able to know that mecca uh now the city of mecca is uh 10 bucks too and be able to know where how to reconnect to your culture how to reconnect to your ancestors is important and you can see we traded copper and gold and food and and silver and salt and glass and um so many different things in ivory and i mean so many different things wrote we wrote literature we uh created literature uh, verbal spoken language and you know i mean it's just amazing the accomplishments we have as black people and we need to embrace it because our ancestors are us and we are them so knowing this heritage is important to us getting these books back in our schools and institutions is important to us and being proud is important to us and this is for you and we move on to the next section 1492 through 1942. The New World, the great continents of the Western Hemisphere, are called <clears throat> and first opened to this Christian civilization by the discovery of Christopher Columbus in 1942. When you look it up, the various countries are all concisely described elsewhere. Area of North America, 8,075,000 square miles. South America, 5,000. 7,535,000 square miles. The entire population was about 505 million people. The first thing we are told about our nation in early childhood is a complete fabrication of the truth. Christopher Columbus did not discover America. That is only the beginning of the secret atrocities that shaped the new world we know today. Spanish conquest of America preceded by its discovery by Christopher Columbus, known as Cristobal Colon as by the Spanish crown, but um, resulted in a mass assimilation, raping, slaughtering, enslaving, and intention to wipe out all evidence of the native population between 50 and 100 million indigenous people from that land. The greatest genocide in recorded history. The documented atrocities include forced labor, abducting and selling children into the sex trade as young as nine years old. 
mass raping of women and children, the amputation of limbs if slaves were not producing enough. Labeled as hostile savages, if in not complete compliance with their oppressors, buried alive or burnt alive if they was resistant to conquerors' demands, offering cash rewards for the scalps of men, women, and children as proof of murder. And it gets worse and worse and worse, intentionally spreading smallpox disease as an early means of biological warfare was done. Forced removal from their homes onto lands onto small reservations that were barren with unbelievable conditions. Forced to walk in death marches of more than 1,000 miles onto reservations of which if they was unable to make it, they were left for dead. These people who did these things were, you know, um, considered um, honorable in the U.S. American government and when you look them up in history. However, they're not honorable and all 337 treaties signed by the U.S. government and Indian nations have been broken by the United States. Okay? And once these lands were deemed valuable to the Indian people, they were then again taken away from them and they were forced to move off of any valuable reservations that they had. The public execution of uh, the native indigenous people, the Indians and Africans of America and their children were murdered by the slamming them against tree trunks while pregnant women with bellies were sliced open onto public display as warning for those who did not comply. These same mass murderers became labeled as heroes after sweeping through villages and slaughtering unarmed civilizations, systematically kidnapping children and forcing them into boarding school systems which they were beaten and forbidden to speak their native language, brainwashed into becoming Americanized and often molested. They was not entitled any of their rights of citizenship of their own land until 1924. They was not included in, in the initial civil rights acts and did not receive equal legal protections and the rights until 1968 not allowed to practice their own religion and their own spirituality until 1978. The 1970s, the attendance of these brutal beatings in public and the um, boarding schools was peaked and it wasn't until 1975 that the United States government emphasized a reduction in boarding schools with most of, for most of those things. So this is the history of Christopher Columbus and it is known that pilgrims and pilgrims arrived here uh, later in the 1620s, but their main goal with Christopher Columbus was to exterminate the civilizations that had existed here for at least 30,000 to 200,000 years. So these are the Almacs, the Incas, the Mayas, the Moors, and the civilizations. They were destroyed by Christopher Columbus over 200,000 years of heritage, culture, and people. In fact, the American Holocaust is where Hitler got his inspiration for his concentration camps to use biological warfare and disease and starvation and the migration of his people into these um, captivity of, uh, my, of uh, concentration camps. And so uh, Christopher Columbus came and did this to the um, uh, Americans and the, in the Americans, the native Indians of this land. And he claimed he discovered it and he invaded it and he conquered these people and he subjugated them into slavery. And it's unfortunate, but this is the history of America. And even from Christopher Columbus' old, own personal log, he says, They brought us patriots and balls of cotton, parrots and balls of cotton and spears, and many other things which they exchanged for glass beads and hawk bells. They willingly traded everything they owned. They were well built with good bodies and handsome features. They do not bear arms. They do not know them. For I showed them a sword, and they cut themselves from the edge out of ignorance. They have no iron. Their spears are made of cane, and they will make fine servants. And with 50 men, we would, we would subjugate them all, and we will make them do whatever we want. And this is what he did, and he came from the islands of Italy, Genoa, specifically Genoa, and I want you to look how he colonized South America, North America, specifically starting with the Caribbean islands, and these are all American, South America, North America, United States, the Caribbean islands is a big part of the American 
Haitian people and they are the Native Americans as well. He started in Haiti and Cuba and these other places. So nothing is off limits. We're going to explore all parts of the history that shows how it connects all Native Indian African cultures through the colonization of these uh, conquistadors, Christopher Columbus. And I want y'all to pay attention to the maps, these old maps, uh, specifically where it says Hispania and notice that that is Spain in the previous map. Before that, and pay attention to the coat of arms, the flags, everything that is going to be shown here because we're going to show how he colonized all of South America, North America, Mexico, the Caribbean islands. Nothing is off limits. He traveled to all parts of the world of Africa, Asia, France, through all throughout Europe. Uh, Portugal and beyond so we want to pay attention specifically to these old maps and the Caribbean Sea where he started from out in Haiti and Cuba well, as you see from Hispania to Hispaniola uh, similar names because of the demographic of the people also the same um, and the history of is the same and all he whom he terrorized we are all one people and this is important to pay attention that all of the Caribbean islands all of Mexico all of South America, all of North America, all of the United States of America is all of the Native Americans whom Christopher Columbus uh, slaughtered uh, and whom they want us to patronize and honor, but we shall not.
ፖለቲካ ጥሩ ሊሆን ይችላል ፕሮፓጋንዳ አንድ መንግስት ማድረግ ያለበት ነገር ሊሆን ይችላል ነገር ግን ሁሉ ጊዜ ታሪክ ይስላልና ሀገር ይስላልና በገበሬ ውስጥ ነበር አብዮቱን የተነገደው በዚህ እንደሃ ገበሬ ገበሬው ግን ያው ነው ዶን ሰንትሮ ጭሰኛ ሰባና በንጉስ ሰለሞን የዘር ሐረግ ውስጥ 225 ንግስት አጥወልደዋል የሰምንተኛ ጊዜ ጻንሶን በሙት የተጨናቀፈባቸው ወይዘሮ የሽነቤት ለዘጠነኛ ጊዜ ጻንሶ በወቅቱ ያርግ የጥላይ ግሽ የነበሩት የራስ መኮንን ባለቤት መጻንሳቸው እንደተሰማ የአካባቢው ድንቤት ተናጋሪዎች የሃይማኖት አባቶች ጻንሶ ከዚህ ቀደሞቹ በተለየ በህይወት እንደሚኖርና እንደተወለደ ከነቱ ተመጥሎ በእንቅብካቤ እንዲያልክ መደረግ እንዳለበት ተናገሩ ትንቤ ተናገሩም ስለ ጻኑ ይወደፊት ይወድም ተንቤው ነበር ስለ ተጻነሰው ልጅ የተነገረው ትንቤት የሰሙት አባት ራስ መኮንን ለትንቤቱ ብዙ ትኩረት አሰጥቶት ነበር ለጀን የሚሰጠው ሆነ የሚነሳው ፈጣሪያችን ብቻ ነው ታዲያ እኛ በእርሱ ስራ ገብተን እናትና ልጅን የምናለያየው ለምን እንደሆነ በማለት የትንቢት ተናጋሪዎችን ሐሳብ ይቀቡ ልጅ ለማግኘት ኩኩታቸው ከፍተኛ ስለነበር በአቋማቸው ብዙ ማልገፉበት እንዳው የተባለው ሁሉ 
የሚያደርጉ ፈቃደኛ ሆኖ ካፒያ ዝናብ ለይት ነበር ወዘሩ የሽመቤት እንደ ከስ ይቀደሙ ብዙ ሳይጨቀሩ ወንድ ልጅ በደና ተከላከለ በትንቢት እንደተነገረው ንጻኑ ከእናቱ ወደ ሆኖ ተለይቶ እንደልክበት ወደ ተዘጋጀ ለጽፋ ተወሰደ ሰጎሩ ከአዲስ አበባ 570 ኪሎ ሜትር ላይ ትገኛለች በጣም ወገና ለምለም ሀገር ነች ማለባትም ደግነታቸው ጥቅር ላይ ከሚታየው አረንጓዴ ምንጭ የተፈጠሩ ወገን የተነሳ ይመስለኛል ያው ወይ በደግነታቸው በሳቸው ጊዜ ብዙ ራባ አይታወቅም ሰው ጠሩ የሚያደርበት እንደሆነ ነው የሚነገረው ወረዳት ሰው ይወጣቸዋል እና ከዚህ ለምለም ሀገር ይወጡ ሰው መሆናቸው ነው ይመስለኛል ለምለም ይተባሉ እንደዚህ ባሪን አከባቢ ወስናል ይባላል ሌላው ደግሞ አንዳንዴ ከእግዚአብሔር በስልጣን ከእግዚአብሔር መከባት ይባላል ጀርሶ ኪዳነ መረብ በክርስቲያን ግቢ ውስጥ የጃኖይ በተብት የተቀበረበት ቦታ አለ በስፍራው ላይ ለመልከት አንዲት ዛፍ እንደተከላ ትገኛለች ያኖይ መተኛው ሰውታዩን ደመላክ ነው ሆዱ ሚያቸው ኢትዮጵያ በራን ነበር ያኖይ ማለት ነው አጣላች ነጥብ እንደምትፈልጉ አባታቸው ራስ መቆነን ነው ራስ መቆነን ባለፈ ደሞ የደነ አሞት አል ይባላል እንጂስ አከተተውሯል ነው የሚባለው ራስ መቆነን የቻኑ ያጣል እና ለሚደኩ ነው የተወደዱት እና ከዘመን መሳፍን ስርዓት ገና ብዙ አራቀችም ነበር አስቂት ወድሮስ የጀመሩትን ኢትዮጵያን አንድ የማድረግ አላማ አጽም ሊል ተረክቦ ብዙ ሰርተዋል ኢትዮጵያን በሩዋን ወደ ውጭ ዓለም መቅበት የጀመረችበት ዘመን ነበር ለኡል ራስ መቆነን ካርገጀነት በተጨማሪ የአጽም ሊል ታማኝና የቅርብ ወዳጅ ነበር አጽም ሊል ከም ወክለ ወደ አውሮፓ የሚጓዙት እሳቸው ነበር በዚህም ጉዞቸው የአውሮፓን ስልጣን የያዩት ራስ መቆነን በኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ ዘመናዊ ተመርተና ህግመና እንዲስፋፋ ጉጉት 
ነበራቸው በ1990 በኢትዮጵያ የመጀመሪያውን ሆስፒታል በሐረር ውስጥ አሰሩ የሰናይ ትምህርት ወሳኝነት የተረዱት ራስ መኮንን ልጃቸው ተፈሪን በፈረንሳይ ሚሽን አንድሬ ጀርሶ አማካኝነት እንዲማሩ አደረጉ ጎንደ ለጎን ደግሞ ግዕዝና አማርኛ እንዲማሩ አደረጉ የተፈሪ በለነት በብዙ ሰዎች ዘንድ የተመሰቀረለት ነበር አባት ካሴም ልጅ ዘንድ ፈቃድ አንተ ልጃቸው ተፈሪ ገና በ13 አመቱ ጥቅምት 21 18 98 አመተ ምህረት ነበር ደጃዝ ማጅ ተብሎ ማርጌ የጋራ ሞለታ አውራጃ ከሽሆኖ ይሾኖ በአሁኑ ሰዓት ሐረር ለጉብኝት ይወጣ ሰው የራስ መኮንነን አውጥ ያገኘው ይችላል ታሪካቸውን ግን ለማንበብ የሚቸገር ሊሆን ይችላል ደጃዝ ማጅ ተብሎ በተሾሙ ከጥቂት ወራት በኋላ ማለት መጋቤት 12 18 98 አመተ ምህረት አባት ራስ መኮንን ወደ አዲስ አበባ ሲጓዙ በድንገተኛ ህመም ኩልቢያይ ጆታቸው አለፈ አሴ ሚሊክ ስሜታቸው ብዙ የማያሳዩ ሰው ነበሩ ለምጀመሪያ ጊዜም ከመንብራቸው ተነስተው በህዝብ በመሃል ሲያደርሱ የታዩት በራስ መኮንን ሀዘን ላይ ብቻ ነው ይባላል ስለጃን ሆይ እናት ብዙ የሚታወቅ ነገር ያለም መቃብራቸው ግን በዚህ ቤት ውስጥ ይገኛል ባሁን ወቅት ቤቱ የግለሰቦች መኖሪያ ሲሆን የወይዘሮ የሽና ቤት መቃብር ከመሳ ጠረጴዛው ስር ይገኛል እንዴት እና መቼ እዚህ ሊቀበሉ እንደቻሉ ሊያስረዳን የሚችል ሰው በአግራጵያው አታገኘ ማጨው የሰና አሰይ ሚሊክ ከሴት ልጃቸው ኮይ ዘሮ ሽዋርካና ኮሎ ባለባት ክራስ ሚከር የሚወለደው ልጅ ልጃቸው አልጋ ወራሽ ብለው ግምቦት 10 1901 ላይ ይፋ አደረጉ የ12 አመቱ ልጅ እያሱ በራስ ቤቱ ወደድ ተሰማና ደም ሞክሲትነት ሹመቱ ተቀበሉ በከፊል ከሚያስተዳድሩት የሲዳሞ ጠቅላይ ግዛት አሴ ሚኒሊክን ለመጠየቅ የመጡት ደጃዝ ማጭ ተፈሪ በኢትጌ ጣይቱ አማካኝነት በቤተ መንግስት እንዲቆዩ ከተደረገ በኋላ የካፊ ታራራት 1902 ሲመኙት በነበረው በአባታቸው ግዛት ባህርጌ ላይ ጠቅላይ ገዢ ሆኖ በኢትጌ መልካም ፍቃድ ተሾሙ ልጅ ያሱ አልጋ ወራሽ ቢባሉ ስለ ንግስናቸው ትንቢት የተነገረላቸው የደጃዝ ማጭ ተፈሪ ጉዳይ ጭንቀት ፈጥሮባቸው ነበር ያቸው ልጅ ያሱ መና ወጣ ነው ይሆን ታላቀታቸው መናን አስፈን ቀደም ይስ የነበረቸው ትዳር አፍርሶ ይሐርገው ደጃዝ ማጭ ተፈሪ እንዲያገቡ ማድረግ ነበር ጨው በብርካታ ካይማኑ 
ስነ መቋረጥ ውጪ በሆኑ ተግባራት የሚታሙት ለጂ ኢያሱ ብዙዎችን መቋረጦች የሚያስከፋ ተግባር ለፈጸማቸው ቀጥሎ ባህር ውስጥ ከሙስሊሞች ጋር በነበረቸው ጥብቅ ግንኙነት እምነታቸውን ወደ እስልምና በመለወጣቸውና የሹዋን ክርስቲያን አሰልሟለሁ ብለው በመፈከራቸው ነገሩ ይበልጡ ነው የተካረረ መጣ ብዙ 
بن زیادہ دلیل ہے جو صرف کو نہیں سکھا سلمیا کو امیا ہوا تاون نگر گن کنیت ولد ولد تاون گن سفر یا ہو کو آئے یمی امیت یا ناچو یہ دب پر آچو یہ مسئلہ یہ سائے انہاں یہ نبی سیرو دیتو نا کنسرواتی راس تفری حرامات انہاں سیطان خلدادی آدرگو نیا سایو تنتنو تروفو راس تفری کمی کعومو مالت بتلي وعلا كتماروت وطاتوك يزوفان السجادر يزوفان الأمرار يعني فلو سووك لو تولي فلو سووك هاي طاطا خسيك مسلمة ونتن يوم جيت دي دوان نبنى الوقت هون دار كل اسكين رزقو الدرس نبي زودي تو يهمن دينو برو بطيق اشتو عيقا عيقا رمس كتردو وحالا جن بلن جدي بطن الكاكي دهنا جن فات سمو الناس اللي جيك يهي بلسي بلسو خوتو من نايو يهي بما كاكلا تشو نسي لك مطرات انا كراني نبر يهينو لني دراسي اشتو كاري خوتو يهي كايين يهمن دينو خوانا يهمن تو تحاسي عن تحاسي وج يراسه مريم تدرالنا ديكتاتوريا ورباغندن دي نبرو نتاكي نبرو بيجي ياسولو نتاكواتشو يجي نتاكي كنديو غاردو يوم عندنا نوتشو نبسلو ديتو نبتين بالي وطاكشو لاي عندي نقرار كواتشو يوم عندي بلو انتمي يهي يتالا
ያስጠብቃል ብለው ወደ አሰቡት የተላለቀ ሀገራት ስብሰባ ወደ ነበረው የመጀመሪያው የመንግስታት ማህበር ሊግ ኦፍ ኔሽንስ አባል እንድትሆን አደረጉ የኢትዮጵያ አስተዳደር እንደ አውሮፓውያን ሀገራት የዘመናዊነትን ቅርጽ እንዲኖረው ከፍ ያለ ፍላጎት የነበራቸው አጼ ኃይለ ሥላሴ ሙሉ ሥልጣናቸውን በያዙ በአንድ አመት ጊዜ ውስጥ የሀገሪቱን የተጻፉ ዘመናዊ ህግን በመውጣት አቀረቡ። ሰው ኢትዮጵያ ሰው ለዛውጣ በህግ መሰላል እግ ባራ ጉጭ ተቃለለ አስተዳደራቸው ገና ያልተነገረው አጼ ኃይለ ሥላሴ ወረራው ለመግታት ባላቸው አቅም ሁሉ ራሳቸው ጭምር በሁኬዎች ላይ ተካፋይ በማድረግ ለመከላከል ቢሞክሩ ሳይሳካላቸው ቀረ ጣያኒ ጦር እንደከዚህ ቀደሙ አልነበረ በሰማናዊ መሳሪያ ባየር ኃይለ ታክሶ ነበር የመጣው በአለም የተከለከለውንም የመርዝ ጋዝንም የኢትዮጵያ ወታደሮች ላይ አርከፈከፈ
የጣላት ኃይል እየከሰከሰልናው ሀገሪቱን ለመቆጣጠር በየአክታቸው ቢዘንት አብይቶቻቸው ለማሰማት ወደ ጄኔቭ አመሩ ዶክቱ አሳሂለ ስላሴ ለሊጎ ፍኔሽንስ ተክላላ ኩባይ ንግግር በማድረግ የመጀመሪያው የሀገር መሪ ነበሩ አሳሂለ ስላሴ በመንግስታቱ ማህበር ፊት ባደረጉት ንግግር የታዳሚውን ሁሉ ለብ ነክተው ነበር በሲያም በአለም ዙሪያ ስማቸው መወራት ጀመረ በወቅቱ ታዋቂው የታይም መሰል የአመቱ ሰው ብሎ ሰየማቸው በአለም ዙሪያም የጸለ ፋሽዝም ትግል ምልክት በመሆን ይጠቀሱ ጀመረ ሀገራቸውን ሲመለሱ መኖሪያቸውን ለአዛውንቶች መጥቶሪያ እንዲሆን በመስጠት አሁን ድረስ ያገለገለ ይገኛል አውሮፓ በሁለተኛው ዓለም ጦር ነው ስትታመስ የአጽያ ሀይለ ስላሴን ትንቢት ኦነት መምጣት የተረዳው የእንግሊዝ መንግስት ኢትዮጵያን ነጻ ለማውጣት ከአርበኞቹ ሀገር በመተባበር እንግስቀስ የመጀመሩን አስተዋወቀ
सुनो प्रति
የጀነራል መንግስቱ ጉዳይ ተነስተው ላይ ነው መንግስቱ እሱ መጠየቅ የለበት ሲሰው ይገድራል ጀነራል መንግስቱ በመናቸው ስናልግና እኔ ራሴ በተመናቸው ሳይደነስ ስሎ በዚህ በ ስለ ኮሌክቲቭ ሲክዩሪቲ የነበረው አስተሳሰብ በጣም የሚያኮራና ተስፋ የሚሰጥ ሆኖ ነበር የማማሪኑ ያገኙ እንግዲህ ያለኛው ክፍለ ዘመን በአለማችን በጣም ልዩ አይደል ዘመን ብዙ ትላልቅ ሰዎች ናቸው አፍሪካ
ሰላም እንዴት ይሰጣል እንደሚለው ብዙ አልተፈላሰፉበትም ግዜም አለበራቸው ሚረዳቸው ሰው አለበት ይላል ወርጥ ይላል ግን ይሁን ጭላንጭ ያለበራቸው በተለያየ የአፍሪካ ቀንድ ተከፋፍሎ ይኖራል
ጃንሆይ የኢትዮጵያ ኦርቶዶክስ ቤተክርስቲያን አጥባቂ ተከታይ ነበሩ የኢትዮጵያ ኦርቶዶክስ ቤተክርስቲያን መሪነት ከግብጽ የሚያቆጥ ጳጳሳት ሹመት እንዲቋረጥ በኢትዮጵያውያን እንዲተኩ ከአሌክሳንድሪያ ጳጳስ ፈቃድ አስገኝቷል የአዲሳዋ ዩኒቨርሲቲ በ1943 ዓ.ም ተከፈተ የሰለጠነ የሶፋ ኃይለም በሰፊው ማፍራት ተጀመረ በመቀጠልም አዲስ እና የተሻሻለ ህገ መንግስት በ1947 ተመውጣት የኢትዮጵያን ህዝብ መብት በይበልጥ ለማስከበር ሞከሩ የኢትዮጵያ አየር መንገድንና ቴሌኮሙኒኬሽንን በማቆቋም የመገናኛ መረቦችን ለማስፋፋት ሞክሯል ሽነት ዘመናቸው ለኢትዮጵያ መጣናገር ብዙ ለፍተዋል ህግና ደንብ አውጥተው ሚኒስትር ቢሮና አማካሪ አድርገው አዳዲስ ሚኒስትሮችን ሾመዋል የወንጀለኛ መቅጫ ህግ አውጥተው ዳኞች በህግ እንዲፈርዱ አድርገዋል የባሪያ ንግድ የሚከለከል ህግ ከመውጣታቸው በላይ የባሪያ ልጆችን ትምህርት ቤት ገብተው እንዲማሩ አድርገዋል የህመት መሳያዎችን ከጀርመን በማስመጣት በግዕዝና አማርኛ መጽሐፍትና ጋዜጦች እንዲታተሙ አደረጉ ማተሚያ ቤቱ ብራንና ሰላም ማተሚያ ቤት በመባል እስካሁን እያገለገለ ይገኛል የራስ ተፈሪን ህትመት ስራ ማስፋፋት ያደንቀላቸው የኦክስፎርድ ዩኒቨርሲቲ ኦቀና ሰቶ የክብር ዶክትሬት ዲግሪ አበረከተላቸው ሰላሴ ለኢትዮጵያ መልማት የተቻላቸውን ሁሉ ለማድረግ ሞክረዋል ሆኖም ግን የዛን መፈል ኢትዮጵያ ችግሮች ነበሩባት ምን እንኳን ኢትዮጵያ የብዙ አመት ታሪክ ቢኖራትም አብረው ሲወርዱ ሲዋረዱ የመጡ ሀላ ግራስ ተሳሰቦችና አስተራሮች ነበሩ ይህ ደግሞ እየተማርና እየነቀራ ባለው ህብረት ሰብ ክፍል ዘንድ ጥያቄዎችን ያስነሳ ጀመረ በጃንዋሪ ዘመን የነበረው ፓርላማ በስብ የተመረጠ ነበር በወቅቱ ህብረት ሰቡ በነበረው ቀጥና ንቃተ ህሊና መሰረት ይበጀኛል ያለውን መርጦ ወደ ፓርላማ ልቋል ይህም ፓርላማ ጃኖይ ያቀረቡትን የመሬት ማሻሻያ አዋጅ ሁለት ጊዜ ወድቃ አድርጓል ቅሬታዎችና ተቃውሞዎች ውስጥ ውስጥም ሲብላሉ ቆይተው በታሳስ ወር 1953 ዓ.ም ተመረጠ ጃኖይ ለጉብኝት ወደ ብራዚል በሄዱበት ወቅት በክቡር ዘበኞቻቸው ጀነራል መሪነት ያልተሳካ መፈን ከለ መንግስት ተደረገ በነጋታው አቡነ ፋሲሎስ መፈን ከለ መንግስቱ አውቀዙ ጀነራል መንግስቱ ነው አይና ግርማው ሊነው አይ ያቀዱት ሁሉ ከሸፈ አለም ሳካተነም ሲያቆ ቤተ መንግስቱ ውስጥ የነበሩትን በሙሉ ጨጨቋቸው ጀነራል መንግስቱም ለፍርድ ቀርበው በስቅላት ተቀጡ ተማሪው ለውጥ መፈልደኩንና ቅሬታውን ማሰማቱን ቀጠለ አጽሃይ ለስላሴ በአለም ዙሪያ ያላችሁ ተወዳጅነት ከፍ ያለበት ጊዜ ነበር የአፍሪካ ሀገራት ንጻ እንዲወጡ ታላቅ ትግል ያደርጉ ነበር ለበርካቶቹም ንጻ መውጣት ምክንያት ሆኗል ጃንሆይ በነበራቸው ዘና አፍሪካን አንድ ለማድረግ የአፍሪካ አንድነትን በማቆቃም ታላቅ ሚና ተጫውተዋል የአሳይ ለስላሴ ለኢትዮጵያም ሆነ ለአፍሪካ አንድነት ደክመዋል Then on Friday in your address to the 
the General Assembly of the United Nations, you said we Africans will fight if necessary. Does that mean that you think the United African States to use force to liberate the areas still under non-African control in Africa? I have the rest of the Sahara, the Sahara 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 of the